people in your area? Um, yeah, thank you very much um, for giving me the opportunity to share our story. And, um, well, um, just to start with a little bit of background, uh, in 1999, our government uh, decided to privatize uh, the water system from my town, that in that time was the third largest um, city in, a, in, the, in the country. And along with that, uh, the government also um, um, made legislation related to water, and this legislation uh, was private, you know, was entirely um, privatizing all the water sources uh, from our country. Um, that meant that um, you know people who manage their own water systems, like the farmers. Um, uh, campesinos, indigenous communities, or water cooperatives, suddenly they had to ask permission and ask for concessions in order to run these water systems, autonomous water systems. So anyway, all of these um, led uh, in early 2000 to um, uh, the creation of a coalition of um, organizations and people from the city and from the countryside because we both were going to be affected by the privatization. Uh, the people who live in the city because uh, the system was going to be private, or it was already private, you know, they privatized us at the end of 1999, and the people of, um, of the countryside because suddenly they lost control over their water sources. Um, so we decided that you know this wasn't going to happen to us, and we um, started a series of mobilizations in early 2000 that were at the beginning were very small and uh, uh, with not much participation because I don't think people re were, were realizing what the impact of these. Um, so in February 2000, we organized the first march, and the government responded uh, with rubber bullets, uh, with tear gas, many people were open dead and hurt. Um, and, you know, we, we organized a series of um, events that included um, you know, very creative ways to, to, uh, to say we do not agree with what the government has done and we want this company to live our country. So uh, we for example, organized um, public burning of the water bills because uh, in the city um, the, the you know the increase of the of the water bills were in some cases 200 percent. So we call all the people to civil disobedience. So nobody paid their bills. Everybody brought their bills to the main plaza in our city, and we all burned um, these bills. And we said we're not going to pay. Um, then uh, we organized also mobilizations, we organized um, a local referendum, and um, all of that led uh, to what we call the final battle that was held in April 2000 in Cochabamba. Uh, we shut down the whole city and the whole state um, for almost a week, and suddenly the movement started to spread out to other parts of the country. Uh, because, as I said, you know, the farmers were going to be affected by the legislation. Um, after eight days of battling in the streets with the police, and many people heard, uh, and one kid that was killed, um, the government decided to cancel the contract with this private corporation that was a corporation based in the, in the United States, um, whose name is Spectre. <coughs> And uh, in 24 hours, um, our Congress changed the legislation according to the demands that we had, and that include respect for the uh, use and customs, that, that's the way that the indigenous people manages uh, their water systems. And, uh, um, and suddenly, you know, also the water company returned to our hands. So it was this. City and the countryside, what made possible that we finally had a victory uh, after like four months of having this private company in our country. Wow, what a story! Um, uh, 
So what has happened uh, since April uh, 2000 and the victory in the legislature? Have things stayed the same uh, on the issue of water? Um, well, what has happened then is, you know, it made us realize, and something that I think you should be starting to ask yourselves about what does mean, uh, what does mean public. That was something that we started to wonder because um, when before the privatization of our water system, the water company was really bad. And with the privatization, it didn't get better. You know, it got worse because we had to pay more money for the same quality of water and the same, you know, bad service. So then when, when the government said, okay, we're going to return the, 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 the company to public hands, we, we asked, what is public? Because we didn't want... To, to our company to return to, to the state previous state because it was bad. So we said, yes, we want a public company, but public means that it doesn't belong necessarily to the state, but we, the people, have a say in on that. And um, we thought about a model, um, um, a model that could help, you know, could um, increase uh, um, social participation in the water system and con social control, transparency, you know, all these, um, all these um, notions and concepts that, you know, the way that we imagine to have our water system. And uh, we start to design this, and uh, when we try to implement this model that, you know, it took us several months uh, of delivering among all of the groups and looking for what what was the best model um, to, to have, uh, we realized that it, wasn't, it was impossible to, to set up that type of company the way that we have imagined. And it was impossible because um, you know, all the legislation didn't allow that, that type of, you know, didn't, didn't allow the creation of that type of company. So that's when we said, you know, we have to we have to create a different system in our country that allows us to have a self-managed uh, company, um, you know, the way that we want it. And that's when the, the, our struggle became just not about water, but about something else. And that was the, you know, imagining another um, type of country that uh, can allow more democracy and more people participation in the public institutions and uh, in the things that matter us, you know, as, as citizens. So we, we, we call for what, um, what we call for a, a new constitution. And, you know, um, I just want to, I don't know how to pass in such a brief time, uh, the message to you guys. That, that this struggle that you're having there in Detroit is not just about water. It can be just about water. You know, it's about something else. It's about what democracy means. It's about, you know, uh, it touches other aspects of our, our life, you know, uh, economical aspects. Uh, you know, what does it mean to live well? What does it mean to have enough? And who's making profit of what? And so, you know, just... Um, I will say that what we, we did in April 2000 here in Bolivia allowed us to have, uh, you know, um, another um, type of country, and this was approved in a new constitution where, you know, includes the right to water and all of that. But again, you know, we realized that that wasn't enough, you know. Uh, we had it written in our constitution, and as you know, Bolivia was the country that promoted the right to water and at the UN, um, but that hasn't been enough yet, because people still doesn't have water here. Um, we couldn't make accountable to our leaders. We saw that through elections and through uh, having a, you know, indigenous president, some things could change, but we realized that that's not the way, you know, that we have to be continuous mobilizing on the streets in order to have, um, in order to um, achieve, you know, our demands. Um, the water company is better, but it's not, um, you know, the, the way that we, we want it or we have imagined. Uh, what we have done over the past years, um, I will say 14 years, is try to strengthen uh, the autonomous water systems that have participation of the people. And these autonomous water systems that are around the city and 
all over the country uh, provide water to 60% of the population um, in Bolivia. So that's what we have been trying to do. Uh, I think we have, you know, um, been very weak um, in, in creating a model that, that works for us uh, because we have been also very busy trying to create a, you know, another type of system and, and try, trying to imagine another type of country that would allow something like that. But, you know, again, I want to pass the message that um, these this type of struggles are not um, something that we, you know, we are going to do or we are going to finish in, in a week or months or years. You know, it's, it seems to me being involved in water issues for almost 14 years now that it's a struggle that never ends. You know, there's always something else that happens. Uh, right now we are dealing in our country, for example, with all the um, policies that are putting extractive industries um, as, um, you know, prioritizing extractive industries over human consumption. Um, so, you know, this is this new, new frontier that has, has come in our daily life. Well, thank you so much. Um, Tawana, would you like to uh, answer the, the first question? Describe <coughs> the role that the people have played in the water struggle in your area. <laughs> so, um, first of all, Marcella, I would like to thank you uh, for your work um, and seeing you love and light in your continuous struggle in Bolivia. Um, you know, I, I do believe that we will see it in our lifetime. Um, so, uh, what the people have done in Detroit to um, address the water struggles uh, have been on dif very different uh, levels of engagement. We've had some people uh, engage the court system um, and try and are looking to try to engage the electoral politics aspect of the water struggle. We have people who have set up emergency water stations and emergency hotlines as well as um, we've been canvassing and going door to door and talking to our neighbors about what's going on and one of the things that we've realized is that the propaganda which I'm sure you know I'm sure you could relate to uh, the propaganda and the media has played a huge role in criminalizing the people who are suffering and so um, even in the midst of struggle and suffering we have you know we're, we're trying to talk to neighbors and uh, break down some of those barriers between people who actually live next door to one another um, we've been heavily heavily engaged in uh, countering that narrative regarding the media putting out our stories uh, sharing uh, what our what is called our Detroit Water and Sewerage Department has been doing to um, basically not only criminalize people by accusing them of water theft, but also um, when they're supposed to be allowing us to engage them in a court system, they were continuing to turn people's water off. So one of our biggest uh, defense mechanisms have right now has been keeping people informed, keeping people engaged, uh, letting people know what's happening, recognizing that this is not just about water as you described, um, that this is about something so much bigger, um, trying to reimagine what the water system could look like in the hands of the people. Um, there have been conversations about developing uh, solar filtration systems where people could get water from, because we sit on 20% of the world's fresh water, uh, thinking of ways that people could get water and purify it themselves. That's been some of our conversations. Um, but a lot of people are really, really um, still engaged in the conversation about how we get the system to work for us, which I think, in my opinion, has kind of stagnated some of our resistance. Um, so uh, a lot there, you know, when I, when I think about um, what happened 
in Cochabamba and the fact that a child was killed um, in order for the government to implement what you all have been asking for, it makes me emotional. I have a 18 year old son and I understand that young man was 17 years old. Um, it, it makes me emotional because at this point we have 19 people uh, who are facing criminal charges for resisting our water shutoffs right now from just a few actions here in Detroit. And the more that we inform people, the more people are wanna, going to want to resist this. Um, and so uh, I don't know that we're going to reach that next level without potential bloodshed. Um, it is scary, but I do understand we're in a water war. And I do understand that uh, some, you know, without struggle there is no progress. So um, I've been uh, a part of what is the, called the People's Water Board Coalition and my role has been through Detroiters Resisting Emergency Management. Uh, what it, emergency Manager, what we describe as our dictator over the city who is um, trying to privatize pretty much everything he can get his hands on. And so I've been a part of that team and handling uh, working with the communications team to continue to get the narrative out and respond to media inquiries as well as inquiries from people, just everyday people on the street. I've also been engaged with We the People of Detroit, uh, which are coalition members of the People's Water Board as well, but we've been doing uh, um, the emergency uh, hotline and answering the questions from residents who cannot get through to our Detroit Water and Sewerage Department. Um, so uh, we've also been canvassing door to door as well as having the emergency uh, water stations and delivering water to people. I can tell you that people are really beaten up emotionally right now. We, we, we come across elders who uh, are sitting on their porch and they're you know, 80, 90 years old and they don't want to go in the house because they don't have anything in the house. They don't have water. They may not have electricity. Um, you know, and it's dark and it's, it's, it's drab and it's depressing. But what has happened because of our canvassing is that you'll notice a neighbor will come outside from two doors down and they'll start to engage each other. And that conversation that hadn't happened with that neighbor so that they didn't, you know, they didn't know that their elder was on their block without water because they're not talking about it. Some have even spray painted the blue line that they put in front of your homes to humiliate you yeah. <laughs> and let everybody know your water is off. Some have even painted over that because they don't want people to know. So if there's anything positive to come out of this water struggle, it has been that people are starting to talk to each other about what's going on and what's happening to them. And so um, I'm optimistic. I know that you have not created the system in Bolivia that you envisioned. Um, but I, I will say that you have given us hope to continue this fight. Um, you have given us hope that we could successfully, potentially, at least win the privatization aspect of it. But I do agree with you that we have to envision what a new system would look like and that it has to be much more human focused and interconnected than system focused. And so um, that is my uh, contribution to Detroit's water struggle. Did you have any questions for me?